friends and welcome back to our homestead. It's middle of the winter here in New England and that means we have snow, it's cold, and also it's a good time to do something for your immune system to support it against any kind of infections, pathogens that are around right now. So I am uh, in a hunt for Eastern white spruce pine needles. So what's right behind me is not Eastern white pine it's the opposite it's actually spruce and spruce is what we usually know here in the northern hemisphere as the christmas tree this is spruce and how i know it is because the needles are short and they're very firm to touch they're very prickly and they're firm to touch all right so this is not pine also i there's not many um not many pine cones left on it. But if you look, I'm gonna see if I can bring you closer to this one. Some of the pine cones are actually growing upward. Can you guys see it? It's a small one, but it's right there. And it's actually growing upward. In white pine, they're only growing downward, all right? But here they are upward and downward and they're tiny little ones. So this is spruce, and this is what we know as the Christmas tree. All right, this is a really big one. Here's an example of young white pine. I have a couple of them right here, and I'm gonna bring you a little closer. And the best way to identify them is that the needles are always in cluster. Okay, they're always in cluster of five. Let me bring you a little closer. Right now they're covered with snow. So I'm going to break off and I'm going to show you that they're in cluster of five and they're soft to touch. They're very pliable. They're long. They're long and they're pliable and they're very soft to touch. So that is white pine and white pine is known to be used medicinally, okay? Because it's very high in vitamin C. It was used by the first settlers here in the United States to combat scurvy that they were taught by the Native Americans. And it has some vitamin A and it's just wonderful for coughs and other things. Here's an example of really big, tall, white pine, Easter pine. All right, they tall, really, really grow really, really tall. And they have um, beautiful pine cones that often fall in the fall. One of the things um, to identify also that helps is that they always stay green in the winter as well. They never lose their pine needles. So white pine is medicinal and good to know if it is growing around where you are. Just in case you need a little extra boost of vitamin C sometime in the winter. So this is Eastern white pine. If you look at, it looks like a branch right now, like a small branch, but if you begin to break them off, they actually all come in clusters. So I just broke off a little cluster right here. I broke off a little cluster. And if you look at that cluster, it's gonna be the each little um, needle is actually square it's square on each side and it's always five of them together one two three four five that's how i know that this is white pine all right see that right there five needles they come in a cluster together attached right there so that's how you know that this is white pine needle they are very fragrant very very fragrant they're very sappy and they have beautiful pine cones that we always find under older trees. This tree is way too young to make it, uh, very, very young. But the older, bigger tree always produces and uh, they fall in the fall and we pick them. Um, they're really good for fire starters. And also we use them to fill up with some peanut butter and some seeds and we hang them for the birds to eat in the winter. Okay, we're back in the house with these beautiful pine needles. They're actually branches that I took them down and uh, my hands are all sticky now from all the sap of the branches. They're nice and clean. If you wish, you can wash them, but I can tell you they are clean 
because I collected them at a very uh, in a very clean ecological place and they were just washed by the snow. I was shaking off the snow off the branches so they're nice and clean. And I do not recommend stopping in the side of the road and picking them on a busy road somewhere because that's not the clean place. Anyway, so I'm gonna be doing a couple of wonderful things with these pine needles today. One is I'm gonna be making nice, rich infused tea using Eastern white pine needles, okay? And also I'm gonna be making infused honey. And this is our homegrown honey. Um, raw honey, unpasteurized, and I'm going to be infusing that also with white pine needles. I am using um, this book. I love this book, by the way. So if you guys are interested, it's called Body into Balance, an Herbal Guide to Holistic Self-Care. And it is by Maria Noel Groves. And she talks about many wonderful benefits of Eastern white pine needles. Now you can use other pine needles as far as medicinal um, uses. One, except for one for sure, it's called Penderosa pine is not, it's actually toxic. But um, I'm specifically speaking on the white pine today. Okay, white pine. And I'm going to bring your camera closer and I'm going to show you how to look at them um, up close. Okay. So, um, so the author speaks often about how it is so high in vitamin C. And that is one of the main reasons why it is so important to consume it during the cold and flu season. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be separating these pine needles from the stems because these little stems actually can be a little bitter right here, these brown parts, okay? So what I'm gonna be doing, I'm just gonna be separating them and dropping them straight into the teapot. And I have a like little strainer inside. Let me see if I can actually lift them up. Okay, with a little strainer. So that way it will be easy for me to remove them because the pine needles are so soft and light that they actually will float in your tea. Now you can go ahead and actually remove the little bunch and cut them shorter using scissors or a knife. But if you're out in the wild, I'm just folding them and pushing them inside. But if you're out in the wild in the forest and you have, you're able to boil some water, you're not gonna be using tea bags. You're not gonna be using uh, a strainer. You're just gonna be putting them in a cup, filling it up with boiling water, and you're gonna be making tea. Okay, so I filled up my little strainer container with pine needles, and it takes about a tablespoon worth of pine needles to make one cup. But this is a nice size teapot, so I just filled it up. And I have water that I just boiled. I'm gonna fill this up nicely. And it's not gonna make that dark tea, like black tea or green tea. It's actually be a quite um, mild in color, yellowish color of tea, but it's very fragrant, very aromatic. So I'm just gonna put a cover on. I'm gonna let it sit aside and let it steep while I'm gonna be working on other things. How long do I like to let my tea steep? I wanna say at least 20 minutes, maybe even longer. So um, it will allow those medicinal properties to penetrate into the water, okay? So let that sit and do its thing. Okay, and the second thing we're gonna be making is honey infused with pine needles. Everyone knows that honey is super medicinal and has strong antimicrobial properties, soothing properties. So when someone has a scratchy throat, cough, or just not feeling well and something is coming on, Everyone knows that honey is super good for you, especially when it's not pasteurized honey. So I have been thinking about how can I infuse my honey with pine needles without completely heating and boiling and destroying the medicinal properties of the honey. So I decided to go back to this book that I was referencing to 
and um, the author speaks about how to make herbal honey. And she speaks about taking um, honey and putting dried, or in my case, um, fresh pine needles, and heating, um, heating the honey to a point that it warms up and becomes liquid, but it's not boiling. So what I'm doing is I'm just cutting up into smaller pieces, and I'm gonna be filling up the jar about halfway, it's a small jar, I'm not making a big portion, um, about halfway, and I'm gonna be filling it up with raw honey, and I'm gonna warm up this honey until everything nicely um, kind of melts and marries together with the pine needles. So pine needles are very rich in vitamin C, very rich in vitamin C, and it does not have um, the sweetness that you know oranges have. So it has four to five times by grams uh, higher of amount of vitamin C than the citrus. I think it's pretty amazing. And it also has some vitamin A in it. So it's often used for uh, as an immune ton tonic for vitamin C um, boost kind of thing. And also it was used for many, many years for a long, long time by Native Americans to prevent scurvy. So when the settlers first came here, they all struggled with scurvy when they arrived from the long voyage. And the Native Americans taught them how to use pine needles to combat scurvy. All right. Scurvy is a serious thing if it's not taken care of. All right. So it is used, pine needles used for coughs. It is a really good for dry, scratchy uh, cough, all right? It's often used with um, tart cherry, um, bark. It's used for that dry, annoying, spasmatic cough. It's also used as a resp to treat respiratory infections, to treat fevers, all right? and just all around. It will cause uh, sweating and it will uh, cause a little bit of urination, extra urination to remove extra of those fluids. So it's a heating kind of warming kind of herb. And it's very, very fragrant. It smells like Christmas in my house right now. <laughs> smells so good. All right, so I think the jar is pretty full to the amount I want it. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna be filling it up with raw honey and I'm gonna put it into a double boiler, per se, just to warm it up. Oh, let me turn this off. spoon so I can put it all in here. Then this honey will be good to be used when somebody is not feeling well and they're having a scratchy throat and something is coming on. We're gonna start making tea and I have a cold and flu tea and we're gonna be using this honey in our teas to combat anything that may be coming our way because it's so high in vitamin C. Isn't that good? I just have to say that, you know, we are surrounded by a very wise creation that has everything at our disposal to take care of us when we need it. We just have to learn it, be open to it. I think it's good. And, um, be open to go and forage for it and bring it home and make it make homemade medicines. So I have a little bit of water just kind of um, on the bottom there simmering and I'm gonna put the jar right in the middle of it, just like this. I'm gonna make sure that the heat is all the way down and I'm gonna wait for all this honey to melt and kind of penetrate and go down to the bottom of the jar. And as soon as it does that, I will turn it off. 
I will turn it off and I will allow it to completely, completely cool off. And uh, in a few hours, I will repeat the process one more time. And on the second time, I will actually strain it through a strainer while it's still nice and liquid. And, uh, and I will save it and it will be my infused honey with pine needles. All right, so I think it melted. It's all the way down. I'm able to stir it all around. I'm gonna turn off the heat, no more simmering. I'm gonna take it out of the hot water. Yeah, so it allows it to completely cool down and then it's gonna sit like this for a few hours, probably six to eight hours, and then it needs to be repeated again one more time, heating it just like this, so all of these properties of pine needles come out and marry and infuse into honey. All right, the tea is ready. And as you can tell, it's not there. It's pale yellowish, slightly grayish. It's very earthy looking tea. It's definitely not dark like you would see from a black tea or anything from a tea bag. So I'm just gonna pour myself and my husband a cup of tea with a little bit of honey. And it's gonna boost up our immune system, help us to fight any kind of respiratory infection and if anyone in my family has a cold, a flu, this is a great tea to serve. All right, everyone, I hope you are encouraged and you try something new. Here's to health.